Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby talk this week on Horse Center. Yeah, let's do it, Matt. Let's have fun with this Horse Center. We're getting closer and closer to the Kentucky Derby, so that kind of dominates what the people want. There are some good older female races this week, Matt. We got Secret Oath returning, as is Clarier in the Azari at Oakland, and a good field in the Grade 1 Beholder Mile, but we're going Kentucky Derby, Matt, and we're going to start with brand new rankings, folks. Top 12, we're going to work it backwards Matt and I, we, we've sometimes been accused of being backwards. So let's start 9 through 12. Matt, you ready to roll? Let's go, Brian. Here we go. All right. Kentucky Derby rankings, top 12. Number 12, Matt, I see you have a horse on your list there at number 12 that I don't even have on my list. Yeah, we don't have too many of them This on this version of our top 12. We've got... Uh, just a couple horses each that are different. Uh, we'll see how they play out in the, in terms of the ranking. But yeah, at number 12, I have Go Rocket Ride, who just ran uh, last weekend, uh, I'm pretty sure, in uh, San Felipe, making his only second start for Richard Mandela after a very, very impressive maiden score. And to me, that... That said a lot if Mandela would put a horse that inexperienced into the Derby Trail. Had to be a statement that this is a horse that's really talented, that he really liked. And I thought he ran a nice race to finish second and pick up 20 Derby points. Yeah, absolutely. Papa Mandela, Richard Mandela, the uh, the top trainer out in California for years and years, Matt. He... Uh, He's got a good one. Go Rocket Ride. Certainly a horse I thought about putting in my top 12 as well. Like you said, only his second career start for the Sonic Candy Ride. And he did. He, he, he hung around really well. It looked like he was beat early in the stretch, but uh, he gave uh, he gave no quarter down the lane and was, uh, was clearly second best in the San Felipe. So Go Rocket Ride could be any kind still, but uh, with only two starts now as we're getting deep into the Kentucky Derby Trail, couldn't quite put him in the top 12. Having said that, I got another horse with only two starts, Matt. I'm looking at Kings Barnes as something that could be good. He he could get uh, two prep, two more preps in as opposed to go rocket ride getting one. Maybe that was my thinking. But anyway, Kings Barnes out of the stable of Todd Pletcher. We're going to talk a bunch about Todd Pletcher on this rankings. And Kings Barnes has looked good in his first two starts, very good in his first two starts. A son of Uncle Mo out of a tappet mare. Yeah, Brian. And like you said, when we get to, to be talking about the rank, the rankings and the Tampa Bay Derby, uh, uh, we'll be talking about Pletcher a good deal. Absolutely. Kings Barnes, go rocket ride. Four starts between them, but uh, both full of potential. Number 11 on your list, Matt, is reincarnate. And I tell you what, I was down there at the Rebel Stakes. It was a little sloppy track that day, but I came away impressed with Re Reincarnate. Yeah, you, you, you had to be. This is one of the horses that has transferred from Baffert to Tim Yachtin. And, and, you know, transfer happening just a couple days before uh, the Rebel Stakes. But Reincarnate uh, was one of the horses that was part of... Uh, uh, a fast pace. He didn't have a smooth trip by any means at all, but he stuck around uh, in the end to uh, come up with a nice third place finish in the Rebel. Yeah, I, I was impressed with Reincarnate, and I'm going to talk about him a little bit more as we move down our list because I have him higher than you do. Number 11 on my list, Matt, is Litigate. Like that name, the son of Blaine, Litigate, you get it there. Litigate is a is another Todd Pletcher. And I thought he was a good looking winner while wide, rallying wide in the uh Sam F. Davis. We're gonna see a gaggle of horses coming out of the Sam F. Davis as we look at the Tampa Bay Derby later. But Litigate was a nice winner, uh, pretty lightly raced, only three starts, seems to be getting better. Why not litigate? 
Yeah, why not, Brian? And it's interesting that uh, Litigate, uh, as you mentioned, was the winner of that Sam F. Davis, but he's not coming back uh, in, in the Tampa Bay Derby. No, in, in fact, I, I took that as a good sign for the Kentucky Derby because Pletcher is talking about uh, the mile and 316th Louisiana Derby next. He wants a distance for Litigate because he believes Litigate wants a distance. So I took that as a very good sign, and I like Litigate moving forward. He's number 11 on my list, Matt. Number 10, who do we have? Looks like we have two horses coming out of that rebel we were already talking about a little bit. You went with Red Route 1 in the 10 spot. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I, you have to respect the consistency uh, and steady effort at the end of the, the these Kentucky Derby prep races that we've seen from Red Route, Red Route 1 already. Um, looking like this might be Steve Asmussen's best shot on the Derby Trail right now. He was second in the Southwest most recently. Uh, but as a two-year-old, Red Route 1 was fourth in the Kentucky Jockey Club and third in the Breeders' Futurity. Yeah, the Sonic Gunrunner keeps rallying. Uh, he was my horse in the Rebel, and he made up a ton of ground. It was a fast pace, uh, so it, it kind of uh, played into his hands a little bit. But a very good second in the Rebel. I think he is asking me since best hope for the Derby at this point. He is a stone cold closer, Matt. Maybe better suited to last year's Derby than this year's Derby, but I'm looking ahead a little bit too far, perhaps, with that statement. We shall see. Uh, the other horse out of the Rebel, of course, was the winner. Confidence game. There's that guy again, Keith DeSormo. His brother came back with a huge win on Stiletto Boy in the big cap, but Keith DeSormo trainer does this he he gets horses on this kentucky derby trail and and he pulls off some surprises along the way confidence game you know he had he had some very good races he was pretty well beaten went third in the comp but he bounced back on that wet track at oakland rallied nicely wide it was a good win in the rebel for confidence game that's for sure got 57 points already so he's got a spot in the derby feet in the derby field wrapped up already a son of Candy Ride, and there's actually we've got three Candy Rides in our top twelves. Yeah, I, I I might say four, Matt, because Candy Ride sired Gun Gunrunner, didn't he? So ah. yeah, he's he's the grandsire of Red Rat one too. Candy Ride all over our list this year. A very good sire, and of course a very good horse years ago out in California after coming from South America. Matt, number nine on our list, we don't have to talk about two different horses because that's we, we have the same horse at number nine. And that horse is Angel of Empire. Matt, I'm not quite sold as Angel of Empire as being the top horse in Brad Cox's three-year-old barn. I'm not quite sold that that Risen Star was uh, filled with a lot of good horses. But it's hard to argue his steady progression, and he's run two good Stakes races this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a, has that nice win uh, in the Risen Star and was also second in the Smarty Jones at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, and, and we'll see. I assume he's going to come back in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, and uh, that will be, certainly we'll find out a lot more about Angel of Empire then. But hey, you were mentioning maybe he's not the best uh, three-year-old in the Brad Cox barn. That, that still isn't saying something that bad. No, Brad, Brad Cox is loaded. Todd Pletcher is loaded. And now Tim Yachtin is loaded. But first, let's look at our middle of our rankings, Matt. This is five through eight. All right, so Red Rot 1 found my list. The, co the closer who finished second on a sloppy track in the Rebel is number eight. And real quick, if you see the order of my Rebel horses, I actually – have them in reverse order of how they're finished. I, I ended up liking the third horse best, the second horse second best, and the winner third best. But I thought all of them deserve a spot on the rankings, and all of them could move forward off that rebel. Matt, your number eight is kind of a hot horse. In fact, you probably have them lower than a lot of people do. Tap it, Trice. Yeah, and, and I only have him lower because uh, he has not. He has yet to hit the Kentucky Derby Trail. Um, after uh, a couple of uh, really nice victories, broke his maiden uh, 
in his uh, second start and then was a very impressive winner of his maiden and even more impressive big jumps in speed figures from race to race, but even more impressive in an allowance victory most recently. He will go on to the Derby Trail uh, in the Tampa Bay Derby, so we'll talk more about ta uh, Tappet Trice in that race rundown. Absolutely. Certainly a good-looking young son of Tappet. Matt, number seven on my list is Reincarnate from the Rebel. You have confidence game. Two Rebel horses. Why don't you tell me a little bit uh, why you have confidence game as the highest of the rebel horses. Yeah. Again, you know, he, he ran a really strong race in, uh, 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 in the rebel to get the win, as you mentioned for Keith DeSormo, who uh, seems to have horses that win big races on wet tracks. And that track was really, really wet. So we'll see what's going to happen uh, when confidence games, uh, hits a dry track, and who knows, if the Derby comes up wet, uh, that's going to move confidence game up. Good point, good point. And he uh, he has run a series of good races, and he's run some good races at Churchill Downs. Number, my number seven is Reincarnate, Matt, and I'll, I'll tell you what I saw in the Reincarnate, uh, in the Rebel from Reincarnate. I saw a horse coming from California, getting uh, an off track for the first time, breaking poorly being way farther back because he was a speed basically a speed horse out in california being way farther back rallying nicely uh getting squeezed and checked in the stretch and then still rallying on nicely uh the son of good magic looks like a horse who wants a distance and he's had a lot of races uh at a mile or more don't forget he started his career on turf he's getting better with every start we saw that in two straight wins in california there's a lot to like from number seven, reincarnate. Number six on our list, Matt, there's a horse that you have on your list that I don't have on my list. That's Rocket Can. Yeah, Rocket Can for uh, giving Bill Mott uh, a shot in the uh, Kentucky Derby. Uh, Rocket Can now has 40 points when he added in 20 for his win, uh, in, when he added in points for his win in the Holy Bull, and then his second place finish in the Fountain of Youth. Uh, he's run well in both of them uh, for Bill Mott. Yeah, Bill Mott. You always have to respect Bill Mott. And, and it was hard for me to keep, honestly, Rocket Can off my top 12. But I, I wonder how good the Holy Bull was. Uh, I, I wonder um, how much of a race he really gave Forte. It looked like Forte just won that race for absolute fun on Saturday. So Rocket can, yeah, I think he can move forward. He was in between horses. He was part of a, a pretty good pace that day, but the way Forte beat him worries me that Rocket can, can, can be a horse that can be one of the true top derby contenders. But I, I have a lot of respect for Rock, Rocket Ken, even though he fell down my list a little bit. Tapich Rice, we talked about him a little bit. We're going to talk about him a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, he beat a good horse in breaking his maiden at Aqueduct, came back and ran second in the Gotham. That was Slip Mahoney. And he beat a highly regarded stable mate last time for absolute fun. Tapit Trice looks like he could be the real deal. He's number six. Again, Matt, we agree with number five. We're on the same wavelength here with Hit Show. Got to be careful uh, how I say Hit Show. He's number yeah. five. He's also, he's also a candy ride. Yes. Yeah. I was wondering from the name, if that's going back to those uh, tongue twister names of Caesar Kimmel from years ago. But anyway, you got to be old like Brian and I to uh, know that uh, reference. But yeah, hit show. Uh, you talked about the Brad Cox barn. Here's another one of his winners from uh, the, the, the Kentucky Derby trail. Another son of candy ride. Uh, he was the recent winner of the Withers at Aqueduct, going a mile and an eighth there on that slow, tiring track. He looked really good coming down the stretch winning that race, Brian. Yeah, he absolutely did. And he's he's looked good other than maybe one, uh, one loss. I, I believe it was behind confidence game, actually, uh, at Churchill Downs. But he's been very good all along. And that Withers, nine furlongs, as you say, on a deep track, it, it, the competition is going to get a lot 
harder for Hit Show moving forward, but uh, a very promising horse from the Cox Barn is number five on both of our lists, Hit Show. Here we go. Here's the top four. All right. All right. We see we see Brad Cox. We see Tim Yakteen. At number four, you go first, Matt. Arabian Night, number four on your list. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to do with Arabian Night uh, from Bob Baffert. Arabian Night uh, missed some training recently out in California. And it wasn't the training that a lot of horses out in California missed when they had that week full of rain. It was uh, 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 some work that he missed due to some uh, uh, physical things going on. So I'm a little unsure about uh, what's going to happen with Arabian Night the rest of the way. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you, Matt. Uh, there, there is some concern there. He he did come back with a really nice workout since missing, and it wasn't a long uh, uh, time uh, between workouts, but it was enough this close to the Kentucky Derby on a horse who has only had two lifetime races to show some concern. Still, on talent, on talent, Matt, this Uncle Mo looks like he deserves to be high on the list. And, of course, uh, we, we both have him here pretty high years your number four, my number three, his wins at both Keeneland and then uh, at Oakland Park were very, very good. Looked like he could be a, a special kind of horse. We shall see. I am concerned, though, that it looks like he'll only get one more prep, giving him three races before the Kentucky Derby. Uh, our top five, as you can tell, folks, is pretty darn uh, close here because Matt and I just inversed our three and four horses, and then our top two are the same. Uh, instant coffee is my four, but is your number three, Matt? Yes, and, and uh, maybe the number one from the Brad Cox barn, if you want to base it on the fact that instant coffee is a winner of two Derby Trail races already. Uh, the son of Boldoro has got 32 points. He won the Kentucky Jockey Club as a two-year-old and came back in his only race thus far this year to win the LeCompte at Fairgrounds. Yeah, it, it's hard to argue with what he's done so far. I mean, he was a first out winner at Saratoga. Uh, he didn't run a bad race when he was moved right into grade one company behind Forte. And then since then, he's won two stakes, one at Churchill Downs, which was last fall, and uh, and the more recent one at uh, Oakland Park. He hasn't, I'm sorry, at uh, uh Fairgrounds. He hasn't raced in a little while, but we expect to see him in the Louisiana Derby. But a consistent rallier for trainer Brad Cox, the son of Bolt Doro. Um, like I said, he just hasn't, uh, he doesn't have that wow factor, but he, he deserves a pretty high place on this list with his consistent performance. All right, Matt, finally, we, we move up to number two. We're the same. One, two, Matt and Brian agree. You have practical move number two, as do I. Yep, and this is a practical move. This is a real Tim Yachtin horse. I say a real Tim Yachtin horse because he has been the trainer of practical move his entire career. Um, and, and he's, you know, uh, the last two races have been pretty darn good. He won the Los Al Futurity last year as a two-year-old in a field that I think was practical move against three or four other Baffert horses, and he beat all the Baffert horses. He came back this year again uh, to beat, well, they, they weren't Baffert horses uh, this time in, uh, in the... Uh, uh, San Felipe. Yes, yes, yes. In the San Felipe out in California, he was beating Baffert horses that were in his barn. Uh, so once again, a practical move was very impressive. I liked his move down the stretch in both of those races. And I don't know if you have questions about Arabian Night. I guess practical move might be the best horse on the Derby Trail from California. Yeah, I would agree with that, Matt. Uh, what's not to like about Practical Move? I mean, even when he wasn't finishing first in races early in his career, he was running good races and you could see the talent. Now, I don't always like practical jokes going long, going 10 furlongs like the Kentucky Derby, but this is a horse who's already proven a lot. 
uh, in that he can win from inside, he can win from outside. He seems to be very professional in the way he can wait and he can wait. You saw that in the San Felipe where he waited perfectly, calmly. And uh, when that hole opened up, I, let's let's face it, he got a dream trip when that rail opened wide for him. But then he really looked good running down the lane. He was running fast. He was running easily. And he was clearly best in the San Felipe. And pedigree geeks like myself, practical joke, yeah, I really love him at a mile or so. But uh, he's out of an fleet Alex mare who was a stakes-placed mare. Fleet Alex, of course, uh, was a romping winner of the Belmont Stakes years ago. So maybe practical move. Certainly looks like he can get more distance. And uh, we both came away impressed with his San Felipe win. Number one, Matt, no surprise. Forte, the two-year-old champion, is back. And his fountain of youth was most impressive. Oh, Brian, that was that was a wow race coming back off of the layoff from his victory in the, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. If there was any question about Forte uh, being ready for the race, he was ready for the race, and he looked like he has even moved forward. And Pletcher seems to have said that also, that he's moved forward from his uh, two-year-old form. For me right now, uh, in the top 12, it, it's Forte in number one, and it's a long way down to number two. Yeah, and, and I don't think you're going to get a lot of argument from a lot of people. Really impressive. Uh, I love the way that Irad was just sitting on him and waiting, and it looked like he could uh, 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 go at any point. And, and much like a uh, practical move, uh, he was uh, calm and relaxed sitting behind horses. And when he got the tap on the shoulder to go, he just moved outside easily. And uh, I guess the final margin was four and a half or so, but uh, it looked to me like he could have been a whole lot easier. Forte, certainly the horse to beat for the Kentucky Derby, still has to prove it at 10 furlongs, as they all do. Uh, a grandson of blame on the female side. It, it sure looks like distance won't be an issue. He's looking good. And that is the uh, uh, top horse on both of our rankings right now. There you have it, folks. Our top 12, Matt and Brian on Horse Center. Practical move. Where is practical? Oh, there he is. Practical move is our number two. Matt, things are going to change, though, starting this week because we're going to go down to Tampa Bay Downs for the Tampa Bay Derby, an interesting race. I think we have a clear and hot favorite, though, and that's a horse we both talked about in our rankings. Tappet Trice, a good-looking son of Tappet, Matt. Uh, three races look good in rallying for third in his first race, and he just keeps moving forward really well each race he's only had three never been in a stakes race but how can you look at this tampa bay derby field and feel like it's anything but tap it traces race to win yes brian i feel that way also and and to elaborate a little bit uh, this is not an impressive group of horses uh that have been on the derby trail already I think six of them coming from the Sam F. Davis. Um, in terms of speed figures, quite frankly, a lot of those horses are slow. Um, speed figures on Tappet Trice uh, in his recent victory, and even going back to his race before, are better than every other horse in the field. And looking at his speed figure in that allowance race, it's way better than the rest of the field. Yeah, sometimes I say that the speed figures at bigger tracks are, uh, are, are a little bit favored over smaller tracks. So that could play a small part in it, but certainly a very impressive win at Gulfstream Park. It came over Chesterkin, who was actually the favorite, surprisingly. Chesterkin coming off a, uh, a debut win at Gulfstream Park was favored over a stable mate. You see him as the number nine here. Chesterkin will add uh, blinkers as well. So he looks like one of the speed horses. He could be a good one, but he was just no match for Tappet Trice in that allowance race. Yeah, Ryan, that's interesting. And and uh, in that impressive maiden score of his, and you know, I'm, I'm going to talk speed figures again a little bit here, uh, his speed figure from that maiden win was better than any speed figure that any other horse in this Tampa Derby has earned. Yeah, and, and I put him at 10 to 1 in this big field. I certainly could see him lower than that, but coming off the beating 
he took from his stable mate, Tapit Trice, last time. I, I pegged him down a little bit below the second and third choices here. Looking at the time form U.S. pace projector for this Tampa Bay Derby, you'll see Shester, Shesterkin right in the middle of things with a fast pace and other horses out there dreaming of Kona, the eight, long shot coming out of the Sam F. Davis. Zydeco, the 11, uh, definitely a speed horse coming out of the Sam F. Davis. And there's other horses, too, who have some speed in here. So it could be a fast pace, and that could make the job a little bit tougher for Shesterkin. Look who you have way at the back of the field. I, I, I don't know that he's ever been that far back, Matt, but Tapit Trice, they have 12th of 12 early. Yeah, I don't know. That's that, that's a little bit of a head scratcher to me, uh, particularly you know the way uh, the way he's run in his other races and and with his turn of foot. I don't know if he's going to be that far behind. But uh, the the time form pace projector has been pretty good when it has said there's going to be a fast pace. Yeah, and, and, and I see it too in this race. I, I think there could be a fast pace, and his stablemate could very well be a part of that match, Shesterkin. Um, Shesterkin could could be uh, one of the horses uh, that is vying for second choice behind what we think will be a pretty heavy favorite in Toppage Rice. Uh, but there's several others too, and I think the first four horses uh, in, in the post position order all uh, could get some money. I guess Lord Miles won't be uh, too respected coming off a disappointing race in the Holy Bowl, but that was only his third career start. I liked his first two starts, the son of Curlin for Safi Joseph Jr., ridden by Paco Lopez on Saturday, uh, could bounce back a little bit here. Yeah, and and, uh, and, in, and an interesting thing about Lord Miles is, yeah, that last race was kind of a disappointing performance. He did have blinkers on for the first time in there, and now they're taking off the blinkers. So maybe it was something that the blinkers did not agree with him uh, in that race. Otherwise, if you, uh, you you draw a line through there, um, interesting horse because he had a nice debut, maiden special weight win at Gulfstream Park, and then was a close third uh, in the Mucho Macho Man. Yeah, and he's another horse who could benefit if the pace is hot. The next two, uh, the next three horses on the list, Matt, all come out of the Sam F. Davis, as do several others in the race. But the two, three, and four ran two, three, and four last time in the Sam F. Davis. Classic, classic car wash is a Mark Cassie horse who had run against cheaper before the Sam F. Davis, but came off a couple nice wins. He ran a good rallying race and, and just edged out classic legacy for third in that Sam F. Davis. Yeah, and you mentioned a... Uh, uh little bit cheaper he did break his maiden in a, in a maiden claimer for a fifty thousand dollar tag the three classic legacy is interesting to me uh first off you see the jockey change he gets irad ortiz and and that's why i think classic legacy could be the second choice in here he was fourth in the sam f davis but it was a head bob with classic car wash he ran a pretty good race that was his first trip around two turns after running uh, sprints in New York and, and winning his third race impressively over a wet track at Aqueduct. They were all sprints. Then he came to the Sam F. Davis, two turns for the first time, ran a good race, and he was close to the two horses surrounding him in this post uh, in this post parade here, Groveland and Classic Car Wash. Yes, from the connections of the Pegasus World Cup winner, art collector, owner Bruce Lunsford, trainer Bill Mott, and I think this horse is a half-brother to Art Collector, actually. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a well-bred horse, a half-brother to Art Collector, one of the best older horses in the country. Classic Legacy has every right to move forward in his second try at Tampa Bay Downs, his second stakes try, his second try around two turns, and he gets Irad Ortiz Jr. Number four, another interesting horse to me. Son of Street Sense is Groveland. Groveland was uh, more of a long shot in the Sam F. Davis, but he's the horse who ran second. If you look at that trip, Matt, he wanted to make a move on the turn, and he just got shut off. But then once he got going again, he came again and, and ran a very good race. I do see some trouble in his past performances, like he could be a horse who finds trouble. But I think this Son of Street Sense wants a distance, and I think he's improving with every start. That Sam F. Davis was a pretty good performance, considering the trouble for Groveland. 
Yeah, and he seems to like the the track at uh, at Tampa, breaking his maiden there. Um, son of Street Sense. I, I think, am I recalling that Street Sense was a winner of the Tampa Bay Derby a number of you years ago? You are correct, sir. Yeah, I, in fact, I think he's the only horse. I, I didn't double check this, but I think Street Sense is the only horse to win both the Tampa Bay Derby and the Kentucky Derby. So maybe Groveland has that one going for him. Uh, th those are the principles here, Matt, in the Tampa Bay Derby. Like we said, there's a bunch of speed to the outside. Champion Stream, another Cassie horse, uh, ran awful in the Sam F. Davis, but could bounce back. But it really looks like Tapage Rice and the rest. We'll see. Uh, I guess it's time. It's time to make our top picks here. Uh, I have Tapage Rice at eight to five. It's a big field, and he's never run a stakes race. But honestly, I could see him even lower when they spring the gates open. Yeah, I guess so. And and you know. Just jumping back for a second, uh, a super saver for Todd Pletcher, who has uh, won the Tampa Bay Derby five times. Super saver finished third in the Tampa Bay Derby and then won the Kentucky Derby. Uh, there you yeah. go. So uh, just just digressing for a minute. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I guess you fans might have sensed from uh, the discussion of the Tampa Bay Derby that I think that – Tap at Trice stands above the rest of this field in terms of his performance in those races. I get it. I get it. He hasn't run in the stakes race yet. Um, first time on the Derby trail, but he's finding a pretty soft spot to make that first appearance. So uh, Tap at Trice is a little bit of an irresistible force for me and will be my top pick. Yeah, and, and I got yelled at by someone last week because I, I picked against the heavy favorite even though I thought Forte would win. I said I, I thought Forte would win, but my top pick was Rocket Can. Hopefully people use that for an exacta, but I, you know, I, I just like to try to beat the big favorites sometimes. And there was some reason to think maybe Forte wouldn't be at his absolute best in his first race of the year, first race in a, a layoff. So I tried Rocket Can. He ran a pretty good race. I'm doing the same thing here. I think Tapa Trice is clearly the horse to beat. He looks like, as Matt said, he stands above this field on talent and looks ready to become a graded stakes winner as soon as Saturday afternoon. But at the odds, I, I want to take a little shot to beat him. I'll use him too, uh, just like I did Forte. But Groveland for me. Groveland, I think he's a horse who just needs to put it together. I think we saw a little bit of that in the Sam F. Davis. Really, watch that race again. He really did get shut off on the turn and still ran a very good race to be second behind Litigate. I like that over the track, something Tapage Trice doesn't have. Groveland should have very good odds again. So I'm going to try to beat Tapage Trice a little bit. And Groveland is the horse for me on Saturday at Tampa Bay Down. All right, folks, that, that was a packed show with our top 12 rankings, uh, running them down. I guess Matt and I only had 14 different horses in our top 12 rankings, respectively. But uh, that's where we are now. Tapage Trice, uh, who arguably ran, you know, probably the third most impressive race so far of any three-year-old cult this year uh, after Forte and Practical Move last year in his allowance win. So he could move up those rankings with a big performance again on Saturday. But I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to get a parting shot from my friend before we go. Absolutely, Brian. Hey, you know, if you think about it, Brian, in a way, it's only one month till the Kentucky Derby. Because in another month, all of the Derby prep races are going to be finished. So um, we'll see what happens. There's a lot of big races. The 100-point races are all still to come, along with uh, the Tampa Derby this weekend. There's a lot going to happen in that last month of preparation for the Derby. Interesting way of looking at it. Late March, early April is going to be loaded with derby preps, but uh, this one, uh, there could be some derby horses in this one, the Tampa Bay Derby as well. Folks, I want to thank you as always for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the show. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please do so now. We also need to thank Candace Curtis in the home office for our race graphic, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor. And of course, Time Form US for that pace projector, setting up a fast pace on the table for the Tampa Bay Derby. Thanks again, folks, 
for watching Horse Center. We'll be back next week with another big show. Until then, good luck. We'll see you then.